Ever since it was announced early yesterday that Bernie Sanders had to have a stent put in after um, having a chest pain and uncomfortable uh, feeling, um, I've just been waiting. You know, Jenk would say tick, 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 tick on people declaring that his presidency, his chances of, uh, of, of getting in the White House are now over. And we already have a couple of cases of that. And joining me to break this and uh, other stories down, DC Bureau Chief for The Intercept and contributor to The Young Turks, Ryan Grimm, welcome back to the show. It's great to be back here. Great to have you here. Uh, wish it could be for other topics, but this is what we've got. Yes. Uh, I want to take you. I want you to take a look at a short video from yesterday's edition of Tucker Carlson's show. Now, Senator Bernie Sanders has suspended his campaign after he underwent emergency surgery for blocked arteries today. So this is a major development in the race. I, I want to say this with sincerity. We're of course hoping that Senator Sanders is okay. Um, of course, and that he's back in the race, because we are. But Absolutely. if he doesn't get back in the race, you know, what does this mean? It's interesting that we haven't talked about this openly. I mean, all of us want to be polite, which I think is a good impulse. But 78, and, and he's not the only one who's you know, in, of advanced age in this race. I mean, statistically speaking, it's, it's tough to pull off a presidential campaign, much less running the most powerful country in the world at that age. I guess we're not allowed to say that. I'm 50 and I feel myself slowing down. So <laughs> are we gonna have- old sometimes. <laughs> right, so are we gonna have an honest conversation about this at some point or are we gonna continue to pretend that 78 is just like 38? Yeah, I think, I think it's, again, not being mean. It's right, no, of course. It's over. Okay, so that accelerated fast from, you know, best wishes to uh, Bernie Sanders right. to it's over, it's done. Um, are, are you surprised that, that of all the people to sort of declare his candidacy done, that Tucker Carlson got out in front of it? He was one of the earliest to say this thing is over. No, because that's Tucker Carlson's thing. You know, his thing is to reject isms of all forms. And so here, what he thinks he's doing is he's taking on a reverse ageism, maybe, like a a an inability, uh, an unwillingness among people to to call out people for being past their prime because they don't want to be accused of ageism, and so he thinks that he can be un PC and kind of break that and uh, and come in with this declaration that it's over. And I would actually take Tucker Carlson at his word when he says he does want Bernie Sanders in. He probably wants Bernie Sanders to win the nominate nomination. It would be in incredible ratings for Fox. You know, they can mm -hmm. they've been pounding away at Democrats as socialists for, you know, before Fox was even a thing. Now they'd have a guy who actually says, "Yes, I'm a democratic socialist. This is how I want to uh, remake the country and the economy." So Tucker Carlson Probably would it would enjoy covering a spectacle like that. I would say there there is a way there there is a way that this could bounce to the benefit of this of the Sanders campaign. But if you also if you do look at the the politics of of moments like this over the years, it it doesn't bode terribly well. You have what, the Bob Dole in 1996 where he fell off the stage. It was on camera, and he'd already been facing questions about whether he was too old, and that was viewed as something that uh, metaphorically was a nail in his, his coffin. In 2000, as Bill Bradley was kind of catching up to Al Gore, kind of running to his left, he had heart problems that drove a week of campaigning and uh, and sapped all of uh, and sapped all of his momentum. Bill Bradley, one of the best NBA players in in the sports history, uh, who's still alive today. You know, this is yeah. 18 years ago. Um, but the media just fixated on it for a week, and and they and the intensity of the coverage just saps a lot of a lot of energy. And then, of course, in 2016. Republicans spent millions of dollars saying that Hillary Clinton was secretly on death's door and was covering it up. And then she collapses at this 9-11 event, which again was on camera. And that changes things in our our media culture. And that was played in a loop for days. And I think you know it probably did her some significant damage. So you know, just the meet the media the media reactions to this separate from the reality of it are going to impact the reality. Now, I'm curious for your take on this, but I, one way this could benefit him is you know, his, his campaign has been, again, an unpleasant metaphor, has been flatlined you know, over the last several months. You know, Amer Americans love a, a, a comeback kid, That's they true. love an underdog. So this could kind of paradoxically give him an opportunity 
to turn the campaign around. You know, if if he if he to somehow seizes the moment and and starts to surge back and can make it sort of like a two person race with Elizabeth Warren, if Biden mm-hmm. continues to fade. He surges. He's the comeback kid, and now it's is it? Are we going to have Warren or Biden? I mean, Warren or uh, Bernie as the nominee? Um, now he'd really have to thread the needle to do that, but at least kind of it, it does shake up the race and give him a possible give him a chance. Uh, I think that that could very well be the case. I know people were worried that this was happening so close to the the debate that he might miss it, but apparently that's not the case. He plans to be right. there. And look, if he hits that stage and he comes out stronger, more passionate than ever. That could that could change the narrative. I mean, what he doesn't have going for him is a, a mainstream media that is really excited about having a narrative that is very positive towards uh, right. Bernie Sanders. That that that's one right. concern um, that, that they, I do but have. They, but they do right. They're shallow those, and they do love those comeback narratives. Um, and it, and it wasn't looking like Sanders was going to do anything strategically to kind of shift up his campaign, which. Um, you know, concern trolls on on the right and the center were saying needed to be done, but also his allies on the left were saying like, look, uh, you know, you're you're not moving here. Warren is moving up. Biden is fading. You know, something something's got to give, or you're going to find yourself too far behind uh, when when Iowa rolls around. And you might, you know, the, the the amazing amount of organizing that the Sanders campaign is doing, and they're in the midst of a, a 10 day push where they're trying to have uh, uh, volunteers make a million calls, which yeah. is an extraordinary achievement. And I suspect that they're gonna be able to make it. That that helps, that expands the electorate, but you also have to be within striking distance you know, for that organizing to matter. That's and so true. maybe this is, uh, you know, morbidly the thing that uh, he needed to shake the campaign up. Yeah, perhaps, and I think one thing he has going for him is that I think a lot of people, um, they sort of look at, you have a bunch of people running for president, they're all out there campaigning, but not necessarily. Like some of them are doing way more events, traveling way more than others, and he's been right up at the top. So if he can maintain that, I think it's gonna be a little bit harder to get a, uh, he's gonna drop dead in a month narrative uh, to stick. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.